Let's say that there was an ideal Muslim state in 2020. Ha, mashallah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but let's just say, right, theoretically. What would a woman be able to do to be the state head or the finance minister? All right, now you remember earlier I shared about as she felt, right? She felt al Adawiyah, who was the first finance minister in Islam, okay? Now, the question here is, what would it take? What would it take for such a thing to happen? Now, this could be a whole lecture in itself, but what else does the question say? It says, how is it possible for her to have such a high position and responsibility while having Islamic responsibilities like taking care of children? Then I realized, I didn't tell you in her biography, she has a long biography. Speaking of long biographies, <laughs> mashallah, I didn't share with you that in fact that she was married. In fact, she married twice. And that she did have children and was a mother as well. People want to know these details because they matter, <laughs> right? And because it adds multiple layers to who she is and how what the question is asking here, how do you balance this? Okay, let's, let's finish the question, then I'll come to this. It said, if I understood you correctly, that woman should ask help from her husband and her family. But if she's neglecting her Islamic responsibility, is she res neglecting her Islamic responsibilities and taking such a high level position? It depends. Now, I'm not talking about Shifa, I'm talking in general. You're asking me in the current time and age, if a person takes a high level position of leadership, does it automatically mean that she's neglecting her family or shirking her Islamic duties and responsibilities? The answer is, it depends, because she might. And she may do very well here, and everybody taps her on the shoulder and applauds her and says, go you, go you, you do you, you do you, and all this, all this stuff. <laughs> all right, that's, I'm telling you, this current era is one that says, you go, girl. Whatever you're doing, you go, girl. No, you don't go, inshallah, <laughs> in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always. Sometimes, yes. And sometimes, no. Because people can applaud you all they want. But ultimately, is what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see when he looks at you? This is where the circles of priorities that I was talking about matter. This is why I spent so much time talking about it. Because you know, the book that uh, Sada Maryam was quoting about the woman, the hadith about women, right? That was banned in Saudi Arabia, subhanAllah, and other places I imagine too, that just quotes the Sahih Hadith of Bukhari and Muslim. He says in there very accurately, the, the author, he says, if she, you know, if she masters her circles of priorities, there are no issues with her working in any other of those fields, of those circles. There's no issue. And this depends on each and every person because some people are excellent multitaskers, excellent at multitasking, and others are pretty terrible at it. Some people are terrible multitaskers, but they have a lot of hands helping them, right? It really depends, subhanAllah. So if a person is taking a high level of responsibility and leadership, it doesn't automatically mean that she's neglecting her family. It may be that subhanAllah, Allah gifted her with the ability to be very organized or the ability to have lots of help. Because any person you look at and you say, whoa, how does she do it? Never ask that question because it's never that person doing it alone. There's always a whole, whole team of people to allow that leader to do what they're doing if they really are a balanced leader. Does that make sense? And when they are not balanced, which are, is the case actually of many of our leaders, you start seeing it crop up. You see the house is falling apart. You see the kids are off doing I don't know what. You see the spouse is upset with this. You see this crumbling here and that crumbling there. And you see all kinds of mismanagement, not just in a person, person's personal life, but also mismanagement of the community's time and the community's money and the community's efforts and all kinds of stuff. It all goes together, subhanAllah. So anyhow, I invite us, inshallah, to take inspiration from our role models. And I ask the question in the lecture and I'll ask it again. Do we question the wisdom of Sayyidina Umar for putting Shifa al adawiyya as the Minister of Finance? Would any man or woman today question the wisdom of Umar? He knew she was married, he knew she had children, and he knew <laughs> that she was the master of the fiqh of finances. 
and the master of the person who can go into the souq and say, out with you, you don't know how to do this business transaction properly, and out with you, you are scamming people. He knew who he chose. Why are we questioning this? Inshallah, we get inspiration from that. Barakallahu alaykum.